Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about the support class, his basic weapons, uh, some of his cool accessory weapons, and then shotguns as well because you do unlock those by playing the support class initially. Now this first weapon I'm using here is the default weapon. This is the U100 MK5, also known as the Ultimax. And I like that this is the starting weapon for support class in beta because it's incredibly easy to use. It's not this crazy giant machine gun that's super inaccurate and takes a long time to try and understand the recoil. The Ultimax has good accuracy. It's on the level of an assault rifle. The recoil is very manageable and it's got a nice 45 round magazine so you can definitely put enough shots down range to kill your target. So accuracy is the upside. The downside is it has a 590 round per minute rate of fire meaning extreme close quarters you're not going to win too many firefights. Now the next unlock on the list is the Type 88 LMG and this guy got a nice little upgrade since Battlefield 3. What I like most about the new ammo system in Battlefield 4 is that we're not really having to bother with extended mags anymore. This thing comes with 200 rounds stock. We no longer have to waste weapon attachments getting the extra ammo capacity. We can mod our guns as we see fit. You're gonna see a little bit of the XM25 with its air burst rounds here and uh, I'll get into how it works later if you don't already know how it works. And back to the Type 88. In Battlefield 3, that machine gun shot at 650 rounds per minute. Now it shoots at 700 rounds per minute. So it got a nice little rate of fire upgrade, which was much needed. Uh, slow rate of fire weapons are just difficult to use in general. Um, it's not as accurate as the other LMGs out there. Its aiming down sight accuracy is about 0.5 right now. We'll get more into what that means uh, when Battlefield 4 Final comes out, but it just means right now that it's not super accurate and it's got more recoil. However, it is a lot of fun to use and I didn't really have a problem dropping guys at close range, medium range, and occasionally you could pick off a long range shot, although it is fun switching to the XM25 for those long range kills. A nice thing about the support class is that it gets access to the two times flip up sight. I believe we're going to have that flip up sight available to most classes in the final launch, but for beta we get to play around with it and it gives us some extra accuracy options at range. Something I'm still trying to wrap my head around are the little ammo packs and uh, they have health packs too for the medic class and this is just an alternate option to the ammo box. Uh, in fact, I believe you're going to be able to equip both of them if you want to. If you want to sacrifice your support gadgets, you could have an ammo box and an ammo pack. The packs you can just throw out real quick. They'll Somebody will pick them up and they'll get ammo from them instantly. Uh, the boxes you throw on the ground and people regenerate ammo over time. Personally, I prefer the box with the support class just because uh, people need to regen a lot of ammo in an area. And I like to just plop one down and not have to worry about going around and distributing them to a lot of players out there. Also, sometimes when you're trying to rearm yourself, uh, nearby teammates will steal your ammo pack and you're just trying to get some ammo for your gun. So uh, designating who gets the ammo pack is what's always kind of confused me with them right now. So I'm currently enjoying the box a bit more. All right, let's talk about this XM25 real quick. Here is some footage of me using it incorrectly and still being successful somehow with it. Uh, I didn't quite understand how to aim it at first, so I was just using it like a grenade launcher. Understanding how this weapon works is very important because as soon as you figure it out, it can be deadly and very, very effective at taking out snipers. You'll see here, uh, I range in by sighting in on that truck and uh, there is no special button for this. Basically, when you're not zoomed in, you have that little white distance marker on your screen there and you want to aim the top line on that distance marker at an object approximately three meters in front of the target that you want to hit. So if there's somebody hiding behind a barrier, you simply aim at the barrier with the white line at the top of your marker there, and then you zoom in. You then adjust your aim to above the barrier or beside the barrier and you fire, and your rounds should go past the barrier and detonate midair pretty much right over your target's head. This is uh, gonna deal out a lot of splash damage and it's great for taking out clusters of guys hiding behind cover. Now, if you play the support class enough, you will eventually unlock the QBS-09 shotgun. This is a semi-auto shotgun. Uh, it's very effective. I like it a lot. And you'll notice my crosshair here is kind of a, a weird ellipse. That's because I've attached the duckbill barrel modification to this weapon, which changes the spread of your shotgun ammo. So instead of having a circular spread like a, a basic shotgun would have, it now has an elliptical spread, which can actually be really effect effective for taking out uh, heads that are peeking over cover. I haven't decided if I prefer to just the basic spread of a shotgun. It's nice to have the 
option there. And uh, I'm going to do some more extensive testing with the spread to determine what I think is a more effective shotgun attachment. It could be very situational. We'll see. Now, I actually like the QBS-09. I don't have a lot of comparison. We do get the 870 MCS, and you'll see that in just a second here. But it is an individually loaded shotgun. I have a feeling I'm going to prefer the magazine. Uh, fed shotgun because the loading time is going to be a little bit faster and you get a whole new mag set having to individually load the rounds I I find that generally that works out a little bit better for my play style But it's still a really fun shotgun to use and it's surprisingly powerful You could put a laser sight on here. You see I've got the coyote sight unlocked for it Which you know granted if you're gonna get a coyote sight for any gun I can't say I really wanted it for a shotgun, but there you go, there it is. It's a nice little sight to have on there. And traditionally, the way they've dice balanced shotguns uh, between semi-auto shotguns and pump action shotguns is that uh, the pump actions would shoot more pellets per shot so they could do more damage per individual shot than the semi-auto shotguns. Uh, and they're a little bit more skill based than the semi-auto ones and you'll see here I got the 870 MCS and this thing is just a beast I'm dropping people left and right you can load up to 8 12 gauge rounds in here and those can be a buckshot they can be slugs we're gonna have even more options when the final game comes out I don't believe we're gonna have extended mags as an option for this uh, basically dice found a nice happy balance with uh, getting rid of extended mags and uh, they gave us eight rounds by default instead of having to find uh, instead of making Making everybody equip extended mags because it was just the obvious choice for every gun in Battlefield 3 was to give it extended mags. Now we don't really have to worry about that again. So same holds true for shotguns just as it does for light machine guns. And there's good news for slug users out there. Instead of getting your circle crosshair when firing from the hip, you now have a normal crosshair. Uh, personally, I was having a hard time using slugs, but when I was testing it out, I was getting a weird frame rate issue and uh, I found it very hard to be accurate. So uh, Buckshot was working just fine for me, as you can tell from this video here. Uh, no problem dropping people with it. And it's The 870 feels like a really good solid pump action shotgun. It's probably at its prime right now. It's not gonna get much better. You can stick a laser sight on there or whatever if you want better hip fire, but for the most part, this gun is set and done and it's awesome the way it is. Now some extra support class tips and things to keep in mind for the final game release is that support is getting C4 as a gadget option when the final game comes out so you're going to have that. Remote mortars are going to be an incredibly effective gadget. I'm disappointed that they're not in the beta here but uh, I really look forward to seeing how good those are. I think they're going to be extremely useful. Um, and another thing to note is that the 8XM25 airburst grenade launcher can be used to blow open holes in, say, the shielding here, protective walls. Uh, you can even use it to blow off the doors on jeeps and then kill the people inside. So those armored jeeps that go by, uh, you can definitely use it kind of like a grenade in Battlefield 3 to take off the armor and then shoot the people inside. I think we're just seeing a glimpse of what the support class can be in beta and the new gadgets are really going to define how it plays. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off. Oh, <laughs>